Yo, what's going on guys? It's G Miners here. Today we are going over how to complete the brand new Grandmaster Nightfall, the Lightblade. In this DM, the main modifier you are going to be dealing with is the extra incoming arc damage of 50%. You will also do 25% increased arc damage yourself, but I'm mentioning this because compared to all other DMs, this is going to make a ton of the enemies deal way more damage. So in terms of difficulty, this DM is going to rank pretty high. That being said, my team found that really the only hard part about this GM was the final boss room. So every other area, you can take it slow and play safe, but the boss room, as I said, requires you to constantly move and there is very little cover. So hiding in wells or bubbles is not a very good option. First things first, let's go over team comp. My team used one of each class. Our Titan was running banner shield with the exotic arms Ursa Furiosa. The main role this is going to play is to get revives for your team and then to pop super at times when your team might otherwise wipe. We found that this was also super useful against Thrall during some portions of the strike. With controlled demolition, you can just spin around and apply volatile to a ton of enemies at once, and then when one dies, the rest should chain explode. Our hunter was running double invis, double being your dodge and your smoke bomb, and then on top of this, they were also using Orpheus rigs with Mobius quiver. The tether is great for final boss room for quickly baking champions that spawn, which we will go over later. The invis made getting revives super easy and also allow the hunter to get off finishers for ammo. So with this, your hunter should be running lucent finisher. They can also run special finisher. We opted to do this ourselves, but honestly, the special ammo drops were fine when running this GM in my opinion, and special finisher does burn super energy. So you can decide if this is something your team needs or not. And then lastly, I personally played on Warlock. I started on Well of Radiance, but we quickly switched off of this because, as I mentioned, the only time you really need supers is the final boss room, and Well is going to be useless. I ended up running Nova Bomb, but other teams found that Stasis Turrets would be extremely useful, so whichever route you take should be fine. Whatever your Warlock runs shouldn't have a big impact on your team's ability to get a clear. When it comes to weapons, we all ran Arbalest for the anti-barrier and the damage output that it has. We used Insidious for unstopped and because it was arc damage, and then we also ran Linear Fusions in our heavy slot. There are only unstops at one point in the entire strike, so you don't need everyone to have unstop like we did, but most of the time we were shooting ads from far away, so the range helped a ton, and it was arc burn, so the extra 25% damage was nice. Also, 90% of the shields are arc in this strike. There are a few Solar Wizards, but Arbalest pops their shields fine, so just another reason that we all ran arc pulses. The only major thing I would have switched around is having one player on something like Gallahorn and maybe Blinding Nades so that we had more burst damage and crowd control in the boss fight, but in general, this loadout worked pretty well. That is everything we ran, so for the rest of the video, I'm going to be going over how we approached each area of the strike along with any tips or tricks to help making the clear easier. Starting off, when you spawn in, the first thing you should do is have someone on your team shoot the boss until he despawns and goes somewhere else. The boss's arc attack does a ton of damage, so you don't want him sticking around. And then after that, we just sit back and add clear. We usually focus trash adds and then kill the anti-barriers when there is less shooting at us. After you get past this first area, you will have to kill two wizards with solar shields. Then there will be two anti-barriers and a hive guardian. The guardian will mess you up, so we tend to save him for last as you will also need to run up to finish his ghost so that he doesn't respawn. Your hunter should always be going invis for the finish if possible, which will also generate heavy ammo for your team. After killing all three of these major enemies, again that's two anti-barrier and the hive guardian, another hive guardian will spawn back towards the entrance of the room with some other adds. We back up here and then chill in the main hallway. This is the safest place to play. The guardian should push you and stay at the other end of the hall so you can shoot him. Just watch for his shield throws and his suppressor nades. If you are close to a suppressor nade that he throws, you will die instantly. After clearing this room, you have the barge. There are two anti-barriers to kill before getting on it. And then when riding it, we would just crouch in the center to avoid being shot and only shoot the shrieker that spawns. Then there will be one hive guardian on each side where you need to grab the void orbs and deposit them. We would typically tether one and then nova bomb the other. Suppressor nades also helped us cancel out the hive guardian super. For the second half of the barge, we would just jump off to the sides and then add clear slowly as we pushed up. If you end up riding the barge here, chances are you may not be able to kill everything fast enough and you will die. At the end, there is a portal to go through and get back to the barge itself. 
At this point, our Titan would use Banner Shield to sit on the barge and then clear the Thrall that were there. Blackout is on, so Thrall will absolutely murder your team, so make sure not to underestimate them. For the Lanterns or Swamp encounter, we just moved as a team and had players looking forward and others looking back to kill all the Screebs. This part is a lot easier than it seems, so just keep moving, keep killing Screebs, and make sure to kill the Lucent Moths that spawn near each Lantern. After this is where you will have something like 4 unstops to kill. The first one is going to appear at the beginning of the cave with some adds, and the last three are down by the giant ogres that spawn in. We just slowly kill them from the top of the cave and then try to get finishers off on the last one for some extra ammo before the boss fight. There is also a shrieker that is somewhat hidden and Alakul spawns here again, so make sure to shoot him so he despawns before moving closer. Also, some screebs will jump up to the cave exit where you will be sitting, so make sure not to get blown up here. After that, it's literally just the boss fight. Stay moving the entire time, and in general, if the boss is shooting you, we found it better to move around than to hide behind pillars because his tracking is awful, and if you're just sitting behind a pillar, there's a chance that one stray shot ends up getting past and killing you, so just stay moving. We also generally try to stay up top so that we could avoid the curse thrall that spawned below us. After each third of the health is removed from the boss, a set of two knights with arc shields and a hive guardian will spawn. Once again, in general, we kill the knights first and then the guardian later. When Alakul gets to around 50% health, he will spawn two anti-barriers, some acolytes, and then some more thrall. And then at this point, he will also become enraged and start sprinting around the arena more aggressively. This is where we would try and bake one of the anti-barriers immediately using Nova or Tether. Otherwise, there ends up being nowhere that is safe to move around, and there's too many tanky enemies to deal with at once. This will also happen at a certain point during his final third of health. The second set of champion spawns is a bit more random on when they spawn, so just be ready. We found it sometimes spawns above the 50% threshold on that final third of his health. Anyways, I think that is everything you need to know to get an easier clear of the brand new GM this season. Let me know if you have any questions below, and as always guys, have a good one. Peace.